All right. Last night the audio was a bit scuffed on my Twitch stream. I accidentally fed the music into the VOD, uh, which makes uploading the videos to YouTube very hard. It's a copyright and whatnot, so um, decided we'll uh, bite the bullet and do one of these uh, commentary videos. I can just leave the volume of the actual video down a bit more. Um, so this is a 22 Taldaza, which is um, yeah, one of the highest level keys I've done on my disc priest this season. Um, I really wasn't sure how it would go. Tyrannical Taldaza is pretty pretty tough, but um, all good. So off the rip, we've gone to Razan, and uh, we lost our shaman on pursuit. He uh, he didn't move away quick enough there unfortunately. But all good, we got him back up. It um, doesn't really matter a whole lot when you send any of your cooldowns, healing cooldowns and whatnot on this boss. It's um, just a big punching bag really. Um, see that... Uh, let's go back a sec. Uh, a bit more. Okay, so this pursuits on me, and my priest is night elf, so I just night elf shadow meld it off. As soon as he finishes the cast, I hit meld, and he stops the pursuit. skip through a bit more of this boss. The tank was taking a lot of damage. Which was getting a bit scary at some points. But um, it was fun. We got through it okay. Everyone's pretty good in this run. I think I was the lowest at 484 eye level. I'm just gonna skip through here a bit. We did um, Drag some ads onto the boss at the start too. Uh, all I did for that is I immediately hit Rapture and uh, just spam shields on everyone just so they don't sort of get one shot. That was it. All right. Uh, running up the top. I think we just cleared this pack in case um, we'll need to run through later if they die. Coming down from Priestess or something like that. Didn't even have atonements out on people, there's no damage there. That was fun. We're doing the left, left route in uh, this key. The main two, main two casts you want to worry about here is um, Confessor does bomb somebody's mantle. You got to kick that, otherwise you get the big shield over everything, and then you can't kick casts of mobs inside of it. And uh, the other really dangerous one is fiery enchant. So usually I just try and assign someone to Mantle and someone to Fiery Enchant and then everyone else just kind of helps with uh, the other fire casts that the Augur does. We also drop a totem off to the side here. The Shaman dropped a totem off to the side and um, we're using that to bait the Juggernauts. And this is why I'm standing in melee right now. Uh, just so I don't get hit by the Juggernauts. Works really well. They go out, come back in. So that's cool. We get through this pack very easily. Uh, we're playing a little bit safe here. A lot of people do this to 
these two mobs and the confessor on their own um, basically the more mobs you do with the juggernaut the bigger he gets buffed everything that dies near the not the juggernaut the colossus um everything that dies next to that gets a big buff so the less stuff you kill um, next to him the better we probably didn't need to do that because it's um it's tyran week but we're just playing safe i guess which is fine same deal here we had the totem mount to the side baiting the uh, juggernauts this next pool got a bit scuffed we couldn't get the can get the totem to work properly. Oh, they go on out. Yeah, we had some trouble with totem placement. A few deaths here. It's fun. Didn't really realize where the totem was gonna go. And an afflicted went off in all the chaos. Yeah. have my dispel up to get that afflicted yet. We oh, sorted it out. <laughs> Little death there. So we get through that pool up top. Up top. We'll grab these two guys and a priest on the side. This makes the next pull a bit easier if you clear these guys out. Two augurs gets a bit annoying. And plus an extra juggernaut. <coughs> this was very easy. I'm not having to do a lot of healing at all. Okay, so this next pool this is probably the biggest pool in the dungeon. I focus the auger because um, if someone misses fiery enchant, I just want to get in there quick with a um, spear. But uh, the auger absolutely melted. I haven't even got atonements out, <laughs> oh, which uh, yeah, which is bad. That's why our uh, DK died there. I didn't go in with any prep. I should have at least um, got atonements out at the start of the pool. Guess it all kind of happened really quickly. Um, but that's something I can improve on for next time. He did what he needed to do anyway. He's top damage by a mile on that pool. So quickly. Get him back up and get into this fight. Now, I believe I will be holding onto my mind vendor, the transfusion phase. That's the only point where you're really taking a lot of damage. It's a bit annoying, I had to dispel the molten gold just before afflicted come out, so I couldn't help with afflicted, but we got. Plenty of other dispels in the group, which is good. So I've hit my mind bender, started pumping DPS to heal everyone up. No problems at all there. It's really good. And that's the main thing for these high damage phases. I just try and save my mind bender and mind blast um, to get out big healing when we need it. So next transfusion. Let's 
straight into my mind bender. Pumping DPS. And then we get into uh, execute range. Just gets even easier. I uh, hold on to PI right at the end here. I knew that the boss is going to die pretty quick. And next pull we're going to do a bit of a trash pull with uh, Lust. Just get Lust on cooldown. And I'll use PI then. Was not paying attention to the fire there, but all good. Uh, so when we pull these mobs, they're silenced at first because of divine toll. Then all I do is I just run in as close as I can, uh, to try and help stop them casting. If you're moved out of range, the augurs start casting on you. So yeah, easily melt that pack. Um, since we had lost and no cooldowns, we figured we'd just get uh, lost on cooldown there. I think uh, we don't end up getting another lost. So this round, we don't pull the middle. I don't mind doing the middle. It's not as anywhere near as hard as it used to be. Uh, this uh, this route is a lot similar to um, what I do as tank, though. Going up the left, clearing everything, skipping middle pack. I think it's pretty good. Positioning myself here, trying not to be the one that pulls the stalkers out. Stalkers are pulled in now. Through a psychic scream, just to um, stop a couple of spells getting cast on the group. Makes things a bit easier to heal when you always. Getting that to AOECC. Up the stairs. This pool's not terribly difficult. Maybe a bit slow since it's only three mobs. I think a lot of people do skip this pool. And it's very easy to skip as well. If you've got someone with a meld, they can just pull the trash off to the side, meld, um, let other people run by. Um, on this boss, it's really hard to get atonements on everyone, since we're all so spread out. But I do my best. Try and um, dot up as many things as I can as well. And then uh, I'm just watching the the boss health bars on the right here for these totems. And I'll um, try and help out on a totem um, that's going down a little bit slower than the others. You do a bit of damage as this priest. And it's very easy to just do range attacks from the center of the arena. So yeah, it's good. Clear trying to just because I'm sitting in the middle of the room, I'll hit radiance on myself, and that's the best chance of getting everyone in the room. And then in this part, uh, when you're trying to find a good spot to radiance people, if there's a lot of melee like we've got right now, I'll normally cast the radiance on them. Um, 
keep a tome up for myself pretty easily since I am um, running body and soul for the the bubble um, speed boost. I use powered shield on myself a lot, um, so torment's always rolling on me. So we're just casting radiance on the melee. And uh, spamming normal DPS rotation. The, um, yeah, noxious stench doesn't do a lot of damage on 22, so I didn't have to hold mine bender for it or anything. It's getting kicked quickly. One or two ticks doesn't, didn't really hurt as much on this key level. Um, you, you'll notice I use Sikili, and there's a couple of reasons I do it. One is um, just to remind me when abilities have come off cooldown. Reminds me to, you can remind me to use trinkets or like mind bender and stuff. It helps you um, with working at the best rotation to do DPS. Um, and the way I manage it on higher keys is I'll see like mind bender come up, and it'll you know. Have your other things like cash discipline or whatever. <clears throat> kind of shows that. But um, I won't just straight away do what it says I'll, and hit Mind Bender if uh, I know there's some big damage coming out soon. I'll just hold it and I'll just sit there, make sure I've got atonements out, and um, just spam Smite um, for a little while. And then when the big damage comes out, then I'll slam Mind Bender, and, and then it's not terrible to um, follow the Hikili rotation because you know you're going to be doing the biggest DPS possible, which means you're going to be doing the best healing possible. And the Hikili profile is pretty good. I was using it, uh, using that kind of methodology for healing. Um, up to 25s last season. It's, it's just a matter of understanding um, what cooldowns really boost your healing. And um, gonna gonna send things like Mind Bender. Uh, make sure it's gonna be at a good point at least, which is gonna do a lot of healing. So for this one, um, it's the Soul Rend. No, uh, mind bender is up, but I haven't sent it. I'm just holding it for soul rend. The racking pains on this, I will shield a target like I shielded the warrior. He actually spell reflected, so it was all fine anyway. This got a bit scuffed. Um, I was expecting us to stack up here, but we went into the corner. That's all fine. I sent my mind bender and spammed heals into everyone. Um, DK unfortunately walked into a spider, so couldn't help him much on that. But uh, he'll get b res shortly. Racking pain's about to go out. Just dodging spiders. It's going out on shaman. Pain stuff him. To stay alive easily. Barrier this, give him a bit of extra attention. I forgot to top him up before the shadow rend. Before the soul rend, which is pretty bad. But uh, he was fun. He lived. He afflicted miles away. That was a nightmare. Racking pain on myself, I just hit my um, normal defensive there. Eventually get a sack, which I called for. Um, for this soul rend, I didn't have anything. Wait, oh, wait, maybe a radiance. When did I. Sorry, rapture. 
Yeah. We actually rapture that one. Let's go back a bit. I got distracted by the rack racking pain. Luckily I had more attention inside the actual key, but I quickly spammed some shields out. Inside of a rapture there and uh yeah, people don't take too much damage. Followed up with like a radiance. Easy peasy. Shaman is getting trucked a little bit by the wrecking pain. But all good. And so I'm just trying to stay with the boss. Just trying to stay near the boss. Beat the spiders good. Run around the inside. <laughs> Lost our DK and a spider again. No big deal. Didn't have any big AoE defensives for that soul rend, but I did have my mind bender up. So let's pump out some heals with mind bender. Top everyone up pretty easily. And that's it, boss is dead. It was a three and a half minute boss, but um, we got through it easily. And uh, we actually two chest the key, which is really cool. Thanks for watching.